Hello everybody. So this video is specifically meant for architecture students and budding architecture uh, studios. Uh, and what triggered me for doing this video is lately we have been taking a lot of uh, interviews for intern architects and fresher architects. And when I ask them this question like what is one thing that interests you most and you are concerned about most in architecture. So many of them uh, said sustainable architecture, energy efficient architecture and when I cross question them like if say uh, you're doing a residence and what how would your residence be different from a conventional residence when you say you'll be doing an energy efficient or uh, you know sustainable architecture you'll uh, so what will be the difference so many of them ended up saying like we'll be using some passive de design technologies we'll be doing a courtyard and you know that will ensure stack effect and there will be natural ventilation and uh, some people end up ended up saying that we'll do uh, some sort of a solar chimney so that uh, there is consistent air airflow in the house that will reduce and at end of the day when I ask them that uh, okay fine so if you incorporate all these things will you be making a building that is air conditioning free so then they usually say that no this will reduce load on air conditioning which I don't understand and you know it makes no sense when you are at once saying that you are using some passive design technologies where you are letting the f air exchange happen between outside and inside and then you are saying that uh, you are doing a you are air conditioning the building both are contradictory statements so practically when apart from see when you say that you are to design an energy efficient building or a passively cooled building so orientation of the building you values of all the surfaces that let's keep them separate for the time being yes they work and we should incorporate those things but when you say that we'll do by doing a central courtyard we'll do a natural ventilation and we'll do some some sort of stack effect that certainly makes no sense you know so as architects are have we limited ourselves to U values and orientation of building is that all left to us in uh, passive design techniques so that is my question like as architects what should we do and what should be the path for us when we say designing let's say designing a small residence and what difference can we make to that residence by using the passive techniques so certainly all these passive techniques that are that we you know just for sake of discussion we use uh, that we'll do some natural ventilation etc they don't work with uh, air conditioning and there is another segment of uh, uh, there is another thought process in this fraternity that say that we will <clears throat> you know do um, an air conditioning free building I certainly that that could be a sustainable architecture that could be sustainable architecture I'll not say that I'll not get into that discussion but that definitely is not a sustainable practice in today's time you cannot give your client a building that is not air conditioned you have to take into consideration human behavior human psychology how people are uh, uh, living these days their living lifestyle so you certainly cannot say that I am going to make a building that is totally passively cooled and the person will not be using air, an air conditioner or it, it, he'll not be requiring an air conditioner. You definitely can achieve that, that person may not require an air conditioner, but certainly that is not going to happen because that is not the uh, lifestyle uh, prevalent these days. So now the question is, are there any techniques that we can use to actually reduce the cooling load on a building? So that is my question to you. And the answer to this is yes. But for that you first have to understand how these systems work. When you are saying that you want to cut load on some active cooling system, first you have to understand that how that system works. It is not just that you put, you calculate the heat load and you put so and so uh, tonnage of air conditioning in a building so if that if you limit yourself to that extent we will as designers as architecture fraternity will not be able to take a step forward so as students as young architects we must understand how these things work and how eventually we can cut load on these things you know so that is what and for that 
what passive techniques we can use would be meaningful if we say that the obsolete passive techniques of air of natural ventilation stack effects i i frankly think they are meaningless so the meaningful passive design technologies would only be those that can be clubbed with air conditioning so in my next video i'll be talking of what is the basic principle of hvac and how using passive techniques in small scale projects we can you know uh, reduce load on those active systems so stay tuned for our next video thank you